Let's look at this related rates problem. An observer watches a rocket launch from a distance of two kilometers. The angle of elevation, theta, is increasing at pi over 60 radians per second at the instant when theta equals pi over 4 radians. At what rate is the distance between the rocket and the observer increasing at that instant? Leave answer in exact form. So this is a classic related rates problem. And in related rates problems, what I like to do is first draw a picture, identify the variables and any constants, come up with an equation that relates those variables and constants. And then since I'm looking at the rate of change, I want to take the derivative with respect to time. Then I can substitute in what I know and find what I'm looking for. Let's give it a whirl, shall we? Okay, so we have an observer. I'm going to do my beautiful stick figure. And I'm watching a rocket. And the rocket is two kilometers away. And let's see, here's the rocket. And the rocket is zooming up into the sky. Here's my rocket. Beautiful art happening. The angle of elevation is theta. So I guess, you know, technically the, the person's eyes are up here, but we're just going to do it like this. So that's theta. And again, theta is just like x. We just like using Greek letters when we're doing trig, since ancient Greeks spent a lot of time studying trigonometry. All right. So let's see. I'm looking for the rate uh, at which the distance between the rocket and the observer is increasing. Ah, so whenever I talk about distance, I'm talking about the shortest distance as the crow flies. So this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the rate at which X, the hypotenuse, is changing, okay? At the instant when theta is pi over four. So here's a picture. I always like labeling my variables and labeling any constants. Then I like, you know, writing out what I'm looking for. I'm looking for dx dt. I'm looking at for the rate at which this hypotenuse is changing at the instant when my angle is pi over 4 radians, in other words, 45 degrees. And I'm given the rate at which this angle is changing. Now, this problem might be a little contrived I, because I'm saying that the the rate at which the angle is changing is constant. Uh, you know, in the real world, it probably wouldn't be. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's okay. We're just going to pretend that for this, you know, for a period of time, the rate at which the observer is tilting her head to follow the rocket is constant and it is pi over 60 radians per second. Okay. All right, so here I have my picture. I have my variables and my constants. What is a good equation that would give me a relationship between these players? Well, let's see, I have an angle and some sides. So I already know it's gonna be a trig equation. Let's look at my ingredients. This looks like it's an adjacent side to my angle. And that looks like a hypotenuse. I don't know about you, but I'm thinking cosine. The cosine is my adjacent side over my hypotenuse. Okay. So I have established a relationship between all the fundamental players, all the crucial players of this problem. What I want to know is dx dt. Well, to get dx dt, I'm going to have to take the derivative with respect to time. But that's a little awkward. So before I take the derivative, let me just rewrite this as 2 times x to the negative 1. That's going to make my, my uh, calculus a little easier. All right, here we go. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. And I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. So the chain rule kicks in. 
The derivative of the outside is negative sine of theta, but the derivative of the inside is the derivative of theta. Well, the derivative of theta is the derivative of theta, d theta dt. Derivative of 2x to the negative 1, where time is my independent variable, is going to be negative 2x to the negative 2, and then times the derivative of x, which is dx dt. Again, time is my independent variable. So I have to use the chain rule. All right, let's just substitute in what I know at this instant. Uh, let's see, I was told that my angle here is pi over 4, 45 degrees. Of course, we're always using radians in calculus. The, uh, since it's a base 10 uh, measuring system and degrees are a base 60 <laughs> measuring system. Okay, the theta dt. Uh, we were told is constant. Again, a little funny, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to put that x squared in the denominator. Just that makes that easier for me. dx dt is what I'm looking for. Okay, x, I clearly need to figure out what x is. Hmm. At this moment, obviously it's a variable, but at this moment when theta is pi over 4, can I figure out what x is? Sure I can. I can use this equation right here, the one that I took the derivative of. Off to the side, I can just say, oh, well, at this instant, when theta is pi over 4, can I find x? Yes, I can. Cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. I can do a little cross multiplication. Product of the means equals product of the extremes. I get 4 divided by the square root of 2. If I feel like rationalizing the denominator, which I do, that's going to give me 4 times the square root of 2 over 2, also known as 2 times the square root of 2. Hey, did I really have to do all of that math? I really didn't, because if we remember a 45-45-90 triangle, you know that your legs are going to be the same, in this case 2 and 2, and the hypotenuse is going to be the leg times the square root of 2. That's right. Okay, I have a value for x. I can now substitute that into this equation that relates my rates. Whoops, I put an x there. I meant to put a 2 there. Sorry about that. 2 times the square root of 2 squared. Okay, and now all we have to do is figure everything out. Sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, so it's going to be negative square root of 2 over 2 times pi over 60. And you physics people might want to include units as you go. That's fine if you want to. Uh, let's see, negative 2 over 2 root 2 squared. Well, 2 squared is 4. Square root of 2 squared is 2 dx dt. And running out of room here a little bit. I'm just simplified there, and I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 4. Okay, so I, let's see. I have negative 4 divided by 2. That's negative 2. Negative 2 into 60. It's negative 1 over 30. So I think I have a negative times a negative. So I have square root of 2 times pi divided by 30. And let's put units in since I'm done. X is being measured in kilometers, so this would be kilometers per second. So my answer is the distance between the observer and the rocket is increasing by square root of 2 times pi over 30 kilometers per second at the moment when theta is pi over 4. Hope that helped. Can I